What's up, Bali Stars? My name is Shiksha Meitani, aka Bali Girl, and I'll be your host today on behalf of Pink Villa. Now, today our guest is a very impressive woman. She is a businesswoman turned filmmaker. She started off by having her own chain of restaurants, which she later sold, leading to a very successful life coaching business. She then started her own production company called Forever 7 Entertainment, started with a her first movie going directly to Netflix, a Bollywood Nollywood collaboration. I mean, wow. Today we are here to talk about her first movie, Namaste Wahala, which stands for Hello Trouble. Thank you so much for being with us here today, Hamisha. How are you? Good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, so I wanted to start off by asking you, I know that the story is yours, um, even though you didn't write it. I wanted to ask you, was this inspired by a true love story? Have you witnessed interracial relationships or weddings while living in Lagos? So um, not inspired by a true story, but yes, inspired by just Bollywood and Nollywood and, you know, um, the 90s style Bollywood and, you know, a lot of comments I'm even getting now. I, I think you saw the movie, right? Did you watch it? I did watch it. Yeah, I loved it. Oh, oh, great. So there's a lot of cheese in there. And, you know, I just feel like the over old fashioned romantic 90s style dancing around trees that we sort of grew up on back in the day is is where the inspiration came from. So first of all, in real life, yes, there's a lot of interracial couples I've witnessed, not just Nigerian Indian, like Hindu, Muslim, American, British. I mean, there's so many different cultures coming together. So yes, some of it came from there, like witnessing real, real life stuff, but the Bollywood side of, of you know, just catching eyes from across across the water or, or the trees is, is what really got me. And I really wanted to put that back into our modern day life. I, I love that. So was it your life in Lagos and living an Indian life while in Lagos that inspired your wanting to mix both cultures? So um, Nigerians love Bollywood. Okay, so they've grown up. A lot of my friends, a lot of a lot of the guys, even in the Nollywood industry, have grown up on a Bollywood diet. So people here know Amita Bachchan, Hema Malini, Shami Kapoor. They know more than I do sometimes, and uh, that was where again I was just like, hmm. So no one's put the two together. Z Cinema comes here a lot. Uh, they get dubbed in English the shows, and people in hairdressers, people in restaurants are just watching it. So I was just thinking, why not combine the two, but make it more applicable to here, you know, make it a Nollywood movie and bring in the Bollywood actors and sort of merge the two. So we take the drama of the Nollywood and we take the mushiness of the 90s Bollywood and let's see what we get. And we got Namaste Wahala. I love it. That's fantastic. Now, this is your first film. I mean, what an accomplishment. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, but what was it like navigating and figuring out how to make this movie? I mean, what kind of research does that require? It was a lot of work. Okay, I won't lie about that. It was a lot of work. There's a lot of glam in the industry. There's a lot of fun in it, but it's hard work. And I'm still learning that right now, even after <laughs> after it's released. Yeah. Um, but basically, first of all, it's in my head and it was like, this is something I want to do. And when, once I decided that, I was ready to jump. Um, I believe in the law of attraction and the law of momentum that you do one thing every day towards your big goal. And I had just sold my restaurant um, that I had run for seven years. I was ready to follow my dreams because in my course, and I still do that, by the way, the motivational speaking and the pers personal development courses, I always advocate dream big, go after your goals. You only live once. So it was my turn. It was like, you know what? Since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be in this industry. So let's start. And so that's how I did step by step. So first of all, I got um, a film consultant here called Film One. And um, they sort of helped me navigate a lot of the steps that I needed, i.e. setting up auditions, as I mentioned earlier, um, I had a I had a concept in my head, I had a story in my head, but I needed someone to write it for me. So we had writers workshops. We had quite a few. I, I invited some Nigerians in. I invited some Indians in. I gave them a lot of my family stuff. You know, let's let's merge it all together. So that was a process. Um, I mean, I would say the only formal education I did was not even, I mean, I did a masterclass, you know, the masterclass program with Mira Nair. I love that woman. Um, and it was, it was such an inspiration. So while I was, you know, having meetings with potential um, actors and producers, I was also doing her class. And um, yeah, but my biggest school and my biggest research was actually on set. Wow. Okay, so yeah, you were, but it was your first project and you were producer, director, you acted in the movie. I mean, 
That is a lot of hats to wear. It's so right. impressive. It really is. How did you pull it off? It was like I said, a lot of <laughs> a lot of optimism, a lot of hard work, mm -hmm. and you know, even now thinking back about it, um I applied a lot of what I do at the pursuit of happiness into this. So you know there are days you're going to break down. There are days that you know I came home in tears. But what we would do in the morning was a meditation routine as well as a gratitude circle with every single person in in the room. The wow. cast where we all came together. So it sort of spiraled the day off into a you know already on a good note. Um but yes it was a lot of hats. Yes it was overwhelming but I actually purposely chose to do that because it was my first one. I wanted to learn every aspect of the job and the only way to do it is actually doing it. So now that I know that I will definitely not wear all hats for the next one. <laughs> so. Well, you know, always jump into the deep end. That's how you learn the most, right? Mm -hmm. um, for sure. So, were, I mean, that means were you nervous going on set every morning? It sounds like meditating really helped get you going for the day, but that must have been a little nerve wracking when you went on set. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. You should have seen me day one, but you know, you you just get through it. And then, as in how we went day one, day two, day three, we became like family. It got a lot easier. Uh, people are really warm here. People are really friendly. And I think one of the biggest advice I got um, was. be honest and be open. So instead of pretending I knew what I was doing, I just openly said, "Look, what what like I would talk to the DOP and I'd be like, "Talk me through this. How does this work?" Or the assistant director, "What did you do when you were in India?" You know? Um so I was quite honest and open about it and where I could apply. I mean, I think where I found I found it easier to do the business side of things. I've run businesses for so long here that that side of it was just a walk in the park. Where I was learning and I enjoyed learning was the creative side. but i realized that's actually what i really want to do so okay the best schooling i could have done by being wow. that now, okay so you kind of mentioned this already you talked about your pursuit of happiness workshop and what you believe um do, would you say that it was your own advice from your workshops that helped you take this plunge into such a big career change for sure for sure because i mean i've been conducting workshops for a long time and like i i did i did some workshops for like coca cola for wimbiz which is a women empowerment um group here and you know i'm i'm telling these moguls literally these these business women and these businessmen you know what go after your dreams and then i'm like you know what i'm telling them that what's my biggest dream and i think the perfect opportunity came along after i sold the restaurant um i still have a, a stake in it i'm still a shareholder but i don't have to operationally run it so it just freed up a lot of my time and it was just like why not now you know yolo will you be continuing those workshops oh for sure yeah oh, i mean okay. it, it keeps me going so you know i get a lot more out of it conducting them okay. i like this this movie came out of that mm -hmm. so as much as a lot of people who have come to it have said it's life changing i mean i'm not even trying to boast people literally came up to me and i was shocked when i heard that but they're very simple steps that i teach we we talk about things like gratitude we talk about things like being kind you know stuff we learned as kids but um people followed those tools so I had to do it too, you know. When you teach something, yeah. you embody it as well, and and I'm like really every time I do a course, something bigger happens. And I, this movie came out of that. Wow, I loved how at the end you did your you talk you said your teachings over the credits, and I was like, yeah. wow, that is that's full circle for her almost because this is what kind of jumped it off, right? The mm -hmm. the career change and all. So that was really Nothing cool. That. So that uh, was the beauty of happiness wrapped up in one song, pretty much. That was amazing. Um what piece of what piece of advice would you give to aspiring filmmakers? Plan. You know, you you don't know what's going to happen on set. So one thing that I did do right, I think was spending time in pre-production. Um I that's something Mira Nair told me even in in the master class. So um I think that the more time you can spend in pre-production, the more time you can take away any stress that could come up, i.e. scheduling, budgeting, making sure you have every everything and everybody in place. Um it just makes set easier because things can just come up. So planning would definitely be one. Um and and the second thing is as as scared as you are, still do it. I love you that. You never know. You may just have an Netflix original on your hands. <laughs> you <laughs> never. Right? You're the perfect example of that. Now, <laughs> I have to ask, as an Indian and a successful businesswoman, what were your family's thoughts when you decided to pursue filmmaking? I mean, what would and what would you say to young Indians who are looking to pursue unconventional career paths? 
So I have the most supportive husband in the world, to be honest. And he is oh, my biggest in the movie. Lady. Oh yeah, he is. I mean, you're not supposed to, I mean, yeah, I guess spoiler alert, <laughs> but yes. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I loved it. Ooh, that's, that's fine. I mean, yeah, he's Mr. T. Yeah, so, I um, love that. <laughs> so we've been married for 11 years and in the movie, we didn't know each other, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so he is is one of the most supportive people in my life. And, and on any honestly, anytime I say, you know what, Ugh, I'm not sure, it's like, no, what, you got to do more, you know? So that really helps. He also does my workshops and he loves that. So I think we play that role with each other, that anytime one of us is scared or any anytime someone's going on to something big and new, we remind ourselves about about all these things we've gone through and and that's really been you know really been my biggest support uh, my family my parents my cousins my everyone's just been there you know my sister was a big part of it as well all she has a lot of friends that literally jumped in on this movie and just helped me out so this was not me alone i just had everybody who is passionate about something so my sister's passionate about music so she was music supervisor her friend was is one of the biggest event planners here she helped me with the engagement party um another another lady is my brand consultant and she's she does massive branding for companies so i had a lot of help a lot of kind people that really gave me a chance that's amazing now with COVID-19 um, how did that affect filming and the production of your movie so we shot the movie in January right before COVID hit um, we were meant to release in cinema in April that was it so uh, I had literally finished shooting I had flown to India and I'd done the editing so we were in the post-production phase when the world shut down I was meant to go back to India so I did all my production in Nigeria and all my post-production in India and um, what happened was when the world shut down I couldn't go back the borders were closed so I literally we had to take a break of course I had to postpone the, the cinema release then we started the whole post-production online so we did everything virtually the major difference is I got a lot more time because um, my personality is such I'm always in a hurry I learned to slow down over COVID and instead of a month for post-production I got six months and it was much needed again I think I was a little bit optimistic with the time frames I had and honestly thank God for that because we got this beautiful product which Netflix liked and then gave us a global release so I can't ask for a better end result that. Patience is key sometimes. Well, were, you, were you supposed to have a premiere, a red carpet premiere? Yes, we were supposed to have it all. We were supposed to release in cinema and then potentially go to Netflix, potentially, you know, the typical distribution channels. But this was bigger and better. So I, I'm, I don't regret it. It's just sometimes things go the way they're meant to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you got a fantastic release date. I mean, Valentine's Day for a rom com. <laughs> I mean, right? Oh, wow. So over optimistic me wanted Valentine's Day last year, but we only finished shooting on the seventh of Feb. I'm like, <laughs> so it happened happen for a reason. Later. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, so now you're truly a pioneer. You're the first one that I'm aware of, at least, that's mixing Bollywood and uh, Nollywood. So, what's the overall message or feeling that you hope your viewers walk away with after seeing your movie? So the, there's there's a sentence that's in the trailer, so I'm not spoiling it as well. When when I asked, I mean, my character asked the mother-in-law, um, do you think being Nigerian or Indian is going to affect your son's happiness? And, you know, that is pretty much, I mean, that line and, and, and that dialogue was the theme of the movie, that we are all one. And I love telling people this. A lot of times people ask me, what are the biggest differences between the two cultures? And I actually say the biggest differences is, actually, sorry, the biggest similarity is how they reacted. Um, if you see both parents freak out and, and, you know, sort of be like, why have you brought someone from another country into my house? And that shows you how similar they really actually are. And that is a message I wanted to go home that, you know, everybody thinks, you know, they want it their way. They're so different, but they're so similar because they both reacted so strongly. And it's also how deep rooted tradition is and really does it matter, you know? So the, the first was the We Are All One. And I did sneak in Pursuit of Happiness in the end song. So really, what is happiness and, and what do we want? And most important, just let's have some fun. Um, the old school romance, I feel like in modern day, we forgot that a little. Um, you know, we have a lot of apps out there now. We have a lot of new ways of dating, which is also great. But I miss the old fashioned stuff. So I just wanted a little bit of that out there again. Love let's go dance around that. trees, you know? <laughs> yes. Dancing around trees, true old Bollywood style. <laughs> um, well, do you think that this will spark a trend of mixing uh, two different cultures and two different industries? 
I hope so. I think so. And I know I will. I will continue. So I hope it, okay. it continues to happen. It's, it's real, right? It's, I mean, it is what's going on out there. And it's just a matter of how you choose to portray it. And um, honestly, just from the trailer drop, I was so excited at the response. And I'm still overwhelmed with dealing with the response of people watching it. And I, like I said, one of my favorite, I, I said this to earlier today, one of my favorite DMs that I keep getting are, I feel seen, you know, like, and, and that's just so nice to see. Yes, that's, wow, that's so powerful. Um, have you seen the American sitcom? It's on CBS. It's called Bob Hart's Abishola. It's a, uh, it's about an American and a Nigerian falling in love and it's about their families and their love story. Have you seen that? I've seen a few episodes. I'm dying to continue it. I've just been overwhelmed with this movie, but that's first on my list. Okay, well, what do you think of that? I mean, that's already starting to enter in the US, right? As a sitcom. Yeah, I think it started from the US and, and um, I watched only the first few episodes. I think it was last year or maybe even before that. Definitely I loved it. I absolutely, it's on there on the second season, right? I haven't seen the second season, but I loved it. I loved it. was. It's an American show and it just, it has so much of Nigerian influence and I just love it. Yeah. I love how consume everything is becoming and yeah. Yeah, I know it's really great. So do you plan to work, continue working with Netflix? What can you tell us about your next projects are you taking thinking tv film you're not sure oh that one i'm thinking everything you know it's just exciting you see i told you this was my school namaste wahala was my school mm -hmm. and i love it and now i'm just dying to put my learning into into like you know into the world so really the sky is the limit i would love to partner with a lot of people there's a lot of potential going on a lot of discussions going on i'm just letting that marinate in my head while enjoying the release at the moment but just expect a lot of content coming your way lots of romance a lot of drama i'm really thinking about reality tv it's that's something that i just love i'm a junkie so i'm thinking why not me <laughs> what, type of, what type of reality would you do i i like i like the cheesy i like the bachelor i like i like i like love is blind on netflix i like the like yeah the real cheese but i love it so i'm just again it's all in my head and i, I something's gonna come soon this is what i said the year before namaste wahala came out i just knew i was doing a nigerian indian love story um, so today I'm telling you I'm doing reality. Let's see what happens next year. Okay, you're giving <laughs> us a lot of hope here, Hamisa. We're going to be looking out for you. Uh, now to, to close out our interview, I wanted to ask you kind of a random question. Uh, what's your favorite Bollywood movie and who's your favorite Bollywood actor? Again, I'm being very repetitive, but I'm obsessed with the whole kuch kuch hota hai, kabhi kushi kabhi gam, kal ho na ho genre. Oh, yeah. And clearly the overlapping actor there is Shah Rukh Khan. Mm -hmm. I know it's a cliche answer, but there's just something about him. I just watched Veer Zara the other day. And, there's um, nothing the cliche about him, okay? Right? Okay, good. You agree. <laughs> and I, I don't remember loving Veer Zara when I was young, but I absolutely loved watching it just a few months ago. And it was... I just again, it was just the whole butterflies and the whole the way they just slated each other and they, you just knew they loved each other, you know. So. So, kuch kuch hota hai or kabi kushi kabi gum. That's a hard one. Both, mm -hmm. really both. They have their both. own. Even Kal ho na ho, and even um, what was the last one? Kank, kabi alveda na kena. A lot of people didn't like. Kal ho dies, so. You know, it was just beautiful. You know, the, the reason I love all is the color, the the love, the the the, the loudness. Mm -hmm. Shah Rukh Khan's charm, even though he died, till the end, you were like, look, the way he was just, you know, doing it for Preeti Zinta, it was just, what kind of love is that? You know, he left her love before he died. So, I know. I couldn't tell <laughs> between those four. Even, even, can, did you see Kabi Alveda Na Kehna? Uh, yes, I did. That was dark, but I still loved it. Yeah, that's true. All those movies are really great. So, that means that those are your true inspirations, correct? One day. One, One day, Karan Johar, I'm coming for you. <laughs> uh, well, you're already almost there, so that's amazing. Anyway, Hamisha, thank you so much for being with us here today. I know you're very busy with you. <laughs> your new movie, but I really appreciate it. Pink Villa appreciates it, and uh, good luck, and we look forward to your future movies and shows. Most welcome, and please tell everyone to go and watch Namaste Wahala on Netflix. Yes. We're trying to break, break Netflix at the moment, so... Guys, We're trying to, which is great. <laughs> if you are listening or watching to this, please make sure to go watch Namaste Wahala on Netflix, like literally right now. All right. Well, thanks everyone.